Hello everyone, welcome to the second part. Well, in our previous video, we discussed that how you can create and delete the container. Now in this video, we are going to discuss that how you can create the blob and also how you can upload and download the file inside the blob. So there are three types of blob. The first one is the B blob, which does not provide the flexibility of appending the data. That means if there is a B blob and if you try to upload the data, it is going to override the existing data. The append blob provides the flexibility of appending data inside the existing blob. And the third one is the page blob, which allow you to store the data in the form of pages. But the constraint is that each page should be, the size of each page should be the multiple of 512 bytes. So this thing become much more clear when we start coding for it. So I will jump back to my Visual Studio. Now here we have created the container. Now using this container object, I'm going to create the B blob. So container dot get B blob reference and specify the name of B blob. Okay. Now this particular blob will not get created until I upload some data inside it. So for example, I will run this script in debug mode again. So first it will create the container, then it will call the method that is get B blob reference. And if I go to my storage and just refresh it, so this is the blob container and if I click on it, as you can see here, it doesn't have any blobs. Okay, so this is our blob container and it does not have, does not contain any blobs. So now I need to upload some data so that this blob will get created. So I have a file, which is a log file. So I'm going to upload this data inside the blob. So here I will use using where stream equal to as we are reading the data from the file. So I need to use the file class. So file dot open read. So this is a file class which have a method called open read and this will take the location of the file as an argument. And this method automatically return me the object of stream, which will read the data from the file. So I will just specify the location of file here. So this is our file location. And if you look at the return type of get B block reference, the return type is cloud B block. So I will use cloud b blob and let me call it as b blob now using this object i'm going to upload the data inside the blob so b blob dot upload from stream and i'm going to supply the stream object so if you look at the return type of this open read method it is going to return me the object of file stream and the file stream So file stream. So as you can see here, the file stream inherit from stream class. Okay. So again, I will run this script in debug mode. So first it will create the container for us. Then it will upload the data inside the blob. So if I go back to my portal and just refresh, so we have the container. Just do a refresh again. So now we have a blob inside our container and if I click on it, so it will give me the details. Okay. So as you can see here, the size is 418 bytes. Okay. Now I'm going to comment out this line and I'm going to rerun the script once again. So now it is going to again create the container and upload the data inside the blob. Okay. 
okay there is a failure let me rerun it so I'm going to rerun this script once more sometimes the you will get the conflict error while creating so the solution to that problem is just to rerun your script so if I go here now I have a container and inside the container I have a B blob whose size is 418 bits okay I will run it again debug mode so again it will upload the data and if I go back here just do a refresh still the size remains same and the reason behind it is because every time when I upload the data it is overwriting the existing data which is present inside the blob okay so when you want to append the data inside the blob we are going to use the append blob so that is the drawback of B blob so here I will use again container dot get append blob reference and the name of blob let's say a blob and if you look at the return type of this method it is going to return me the object of cloud append blob so cloud append blob a blob okay again I will use using same file I I'm going to upload upload inside the append blob and here I will call a blob dot upload from stream and stream okay and I'm going to run this script in debug mode so now it will create the append blob for us okay so if I go back to my storage account and just do a refresh so now we have two blobs one is the append blob and the second one is the B blob now the append blob provide the method by which you can append the data inside the existing blob so here I will put a check if a blob dot exist so this is the method which is going to do a checking for us if the blob with this name is already there then perform some operation so in this case I will use if the blob is already exists then append the data so append from stream okay and if the blob is not there then just upload the data whatever is coming from the stream okay so this particular method will return true or false based on the existing of this blob so if the blob is already there I'm going to call a method called append from stream which is going to append the data inside the existing blob otherwise if the blob is not there then I will upload the data whatever which is coming from the stream so if I look at my Azure portal currently we have B blob and append blob and the size of both the blob is 418 bits so I'm going to run this script in debug mode again so in this case again it is going to override the content of B blob so now as you can see here this method returns true because this append blob is already present and it is going to append the existing date uh, sorry new data inside the existing and this is done so if I just do a refresh now you can see here the size increases for the append blob but for the B blob it remains same so now it is 8, 836 bits now let us suppose you want to delete the blob okay so one way to delete the blob is 
by deleting the container. If I delete the container, it is going to delete all the blob which is present inside it. Or you can call the delete method directly on the blob object. So b blob dot. Okay, before deleting it, let me show you how you can download the file from the blob. So it is very simple. Just call, use the b blob object, and there is a method called download. download to a file and I will use this same location and let me call it as underscore b blob so this method takes two argument first is the location of the file and second one is the mode so as I as I know that this is the new file which I'm going to create so here I will supply the file mode as create okay and similarly for the append blob so download to a file same location and this will be a blob so I just put a breakpoint over here and run this script in debug mode So I will do a step over it will download the data from the B blob to this file and similarly for the append blob okay so if I go to the location so now we have two file that is file appender underscore a blob which represent the data from the append blob so as you can see here this is the data and this is the data which is coming from B blob and I will continue with the execution now if I want to delete the blobs I can call b blob dot delete if exist similarly for a blob dot delete if exists and in the end I will call the container dot delete if exists so I will run this script again in debug mode so first download the content and if I go to the Azure portal and just do a refresh so still we have uh, a append blob and b blob I will delete the b blob first and then the append blob so if I just do a refresh as you can see here both the blobs are gone and if I do a step over it is going to delete the container also so the container is also gone so in this manner with the help of the blob client you can interact with the blob you can create the container you can delete the container you can also create the blob upload the data download the data from the blob and delete it Okay, so that's all about the blob.